All right, welcome everybody. It's Chris Petrie, and we're back in the studio. We're going to do a really fun painting today. We're going to do um, this is actually a painting my mother did in high school. Um, it's really amazing, actually. This is one of my favorite watercolors ever, um, and it's hanging up in the house here where I live. And um, this is just um, let's take a look at it. Let's like reverse engineer it, so to speak. We'll kind of like look at the colors, the design, and we'll we'll actually. Um, try to think about how this was done originally. Um, when I talked to my mom, she kind of had some ideas about what she did, but she was just, you know, I was in high school, no big deal, whatever. But it is a beautiful painting, incredible design, and colors are great. So let's talk about this painting a little bit um, and how we can recreate this. So we're going to actually paint this now. Um, if you like this, you can paint along with this too, of course. You'll see how I'll go about breaking down what I see here and like how we can recreate it uh, and do into our own painting. So the first thing I would say is from a design perspective it's um, very dynamic it's like a um, it's like a scene out in like let's say a real tropical area so it's a fun looking scene it's a tropical area palm trees and lots of greenery there's a, a nice looking uh, barn here or house um, and then there's some interesting uh, other uh, subject matter here. This looks like a giant potted, uh, a giant pot for like um, maybe plants for for um, planting. And then there's um, here looks like this might be a bench. And then there's obviously lots of trees and plants, and again the palm trees. And so this is a really fun painting to do. It's loose. It's free. Um, looks like it was done with. A, I was looking at it before for a while. It looks like it was done with a round brush for the most part. So this will be kind of a, a nice painting. It fits in with uh, most of us probably use round brushes a lot of the time. So um, for our style of painting, so this we're just going to kind of stick with our same uh, brush. Um, this is going to be uh, definitely the glazing technique here. This looks like it was um, painted with more of a glazing technique um, to create this. So the lights were done first, and then subsequent darker values, tonal values were put over the top of the lighter tonal values and building it up and making it darker as we go. So light lights first, the lighter tonal values and light washes first, and then over top of that um, we went, um, she probably went with the darker tonal values on top. So that's kind of like how we're thinking of it. We're going to do a glazing technique. Um, lights first, darks uh, over the top. Um, we're going to do a pencil drawing first to lay out our different uh, components of the paintings, our different subject matter. What's nice about this painting too is it's pretty much not too much information and then yet it's not too simple either. So there's quite a bit of interesting things going on in this painting but not overly um, filled with so much detail that it gets sort of unpleasant looking. So I guess that's one of the keys to really a beautiful painting is you know adding quite a bit of subject matter to a painting but not adding so much that it just gets like too confusing looking or so I guess it depends on how you approach it. Um, you can make a complicated scene less complicated by adding less detail or, or uh, less of the subject matter by deleting some of the things out of your painting. So that's getting into a little more of the design but so let's just say here that the design um, the design um, I guess goal here is to get the main parts of the painting, the subject matter uh, penciled in, and then we're pretty much set. So the main subject, you know, the main subject matter is the um, two palm trees, this house, um, this tree over here, this larger tree, this pot, this bench. We could say a main portion of the painting of the subject matter would be this row of greenery coming through here like this. Um, there's some more trees in the back here, that's another. So you could say one here, one tree here, one tree here. So, and then a bush over here. So when you look at it, it's not overly complicated. It's sort of simple with the um, subject matter that's in this painting, which makes it pleasant looking. And then another thing we have to say here is the color scheme. Color scheme's great here. This is the classic red and green 
a complementary color scheme, mostly green, um, and then some reds in it, but mostly the dominant color is the green, and then the complementary color is the reds, and that's a beautiful color scheme. So that's just right off the bat a beautiful painting because of the color scheme and the really good um, layout of the subject matter, which is not too overly complicated and yet not too simple, like maybe just like, you know, something like just one or two things in the subject as far as, you know, just putting a house in the middle of a, a uh, field. But you can, you can create different ideas and play around with design ideas, but let's get right into it here. So let's look at the colors. What colors were used here? We can definitely, um, if, you ha if you're not used to the colors uh, of my palette, you can just go to Chris Petri, my palette on YouTube, if you type that into YouTube, and then you'll see all the colors I use in my palette. So I'll put here what we're going to use. We're going to use all the greens. We're going to use, so we'll just put it right here. We're going to use sap green. We'll use all our greens. Sap green. Viridian. Viridian green. Sap green. Olive green. And, um, Trying to think if there might be uh, maybe some chromium of oxide. We might use some of that there here too. So we'll use all our greens, and then we're going to use our uh, reds too. And along with these greens, let's also do a little bit of blue. I see some blue here and there. So let's say we're going to use a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of, um, I think I see some uh, fr uh, French French ultramarine blue. Then our reds we're going to use are alizarin crimson. And uh, cadmium red. and a little bit of cadmium orange. So here what we're doing is really we're just sort of looking at this painting we're going to attempt to do. And you could use that you could do this with any painting that you see that you might like to um, uh, work from, like maybe a famous artist that you follow, you like you want to you want to paint one of their paintings. You just look at it and you look in the painting and you try to find out the colors that you see. And you just list them all out like this, and then you sit this across in your studio across from you, and then you, and then that'll give you the, uh, the template the template of what what colors you're going to be mostly using. You can add some others here and there, and also too we have burnt umber. Um, we have burnt umber, and um, we have also some uh, that might be yellow oak. Yeah, it's probably yellow ochre in the uh, trunks of the palm trees yellow ochre. So that's pretty much all the colors that I see in here in this painting. So I'm going to put this across from me just so I have a list of the colors. Okay and then I'll take this painting and I'll set it up across from me in my, on my studio table here. So I'm just going to put this across from me. And I will put a piece of plastic over it. So I have some acetate plastic, and I put that over the top of the painting so if I splash or anything it's not going to uh, get onto the frame or the painting. Or if I have books too, if I use books for, uh, for my references or photographs, I do the same thing. I put acetate over things on my studio just in case I'm splashing or this way it doesn't... Uh... Okay, so that's all set. And now we have our rough watercolor paper. That's the same type of paper that was used in the original painting, a, a rough paper. So this is a Arches uh, rough paper. And we'll just we'll get our palette set up over here. And I'll try to maybe set up my palette so that Okay, so I'm going to try to set up my palette. so that I can show some of the mixing of the colors.
take a look and see how that is looking. Okay, that's pretty good. I can move this over. Alright, so this is pretty good. Let's start to do our sketch. Um, I'm going to do an outline, so I'm just going to draw a nice rectangle. So we'll work within this rectangle. And I'm going to contour draw this, so that, that is pretty much just, I'm going to start in one location and just start working. Before I do that though, contour drawing you can, is really, once you practice it a lot, and I have, uh, if you type in contour drawing Chris Petrie, I have a few videos on contour drawing. Uh, basically it's just, you know, starting in one place and working through the, the drawing in a good uh, flow of, um, a good flow and a good pace. Um, to get a nice fluid um, uh, kind of cohesive feel to the drawing. Um, sometimes when we draw, if we're, I notice sometimes people when they draw, like if they're going to sketch, and contour drawing is really just a st style, so you can you can sketch out ideas too. So if we're doing the the house over here, you know we can do sketch you know sketch out the that works, or we can contour draw. I'll get a darker pencil here. So like we could sketch out a like the hut maybe in the scene and that works. Or we can contour draw which is more it's got more of a like a kind of a free flowing So the end result are pretty much similar, but the, the contour drawing is, has a little more of a, a flow to it. This has more of a kind of um, more of a, a staccato type feeling like um, this has more of like a flow and this has more of a feel. So it's up to you how you want to draw it, but I'll do the contour drawing style. And before I contour draw it, I want to look at the painting across from me. And I sort of just want to get some ideas on spacing of where things are. So here, so I'll do a preliminary sketch first. And also, too, contour drawing or just doing a preliminary sketch can really be helpful because you can kind of start to think about how you want things flowing in your painting. Do you want everything kind of flowing in with the wind one way or the other? You know, you, it's kind of fun doing like a preliminary sketch. So a preliminary sketch definitely, and it also helps you to make sure you sort of get everything in the picture the way you want it um, according to what you're working from, whether it's a, a, a painting or a picture or a photograph. So let's make sure we do that. We kind of want to make sure we get everything in here. So... So we have that pot over here on the left, and so. All right, so that that's pretty good, uh, and then a bench over here. All right, so that's the rough rough preliminary sketch. Now we can contour draw. I'll start here. I'm just moving throughout the painting. And I'm going to try to 
I'm drawing this from the painting and I'm going to try to keep it just the way I see it in the painting. I'm not going to really um, try to deep, you know, uh, change what I see here. I'm just going to try to do what, I, what I'm looking at as far as the painting goes. So there's some... This looks like a door over here. Okay, and then I'm going to go back over here, there's some more, and then there's some trees over here, so I'm going to try to copy what I'm seeing here across. I might try to... Okay, most of these palm trees we're going to do with brushwork, and I'm just going to try to get the basic idea of the palm trees. We'll do the details of the palm trees um, with the brush brushwork. basic ideas of this tree over here. There's a couple of trees. Of... Okay. Alright, so that's our contour drawing, and we just basically um, kept our focus on our painting, back and forth, looking back and forth at the subject matter. So as we draw, we go, we stop maybe if we need to skip over that palm tree there, we're doing the roof, and we just take our time. If we want to change directions, then we just make a dot and then go across this way. So it's just a matter of looking back and forth at your picture, your subject matter, whatever you're, you're um, using to draw from, and you just take your time. I go a little fast. I've been contour drawing for a long time, for like 10, 15 years now. So I go a little quicker, and so, you know, as you practice your contour drawing, you'll get faster at it, and eventually it'll, you know, you'll be able to, you'll go quicker, and um, you'll have more of a rhythm to your drawing, but when you first start out, it's most important to go slow, and uh, try to get accuracy as far as um, your subject matter. So taking time to, to capture those correct angles for the roof. You know, and you can always go look, look at the drawing, hold up your pencil and see if the, as you look at the picture, you can use your pencil as a guide. Is, is something straight? Is it leaning a little bit? And you can use your pencil. To, to kind of line it up and then you come onto your paper and you can say okay well the, the roof is about 45 degree angle that would be let's say plumb or straight 45 degree angle and then 180 degrees would be the other way so 90 degrees so you got like let's say if you're going to go around the if you're going to go around um, in your degrees of angles, it's just pretty much zero is at the top, and then 45 degrees, 90, and then 180 would be all the way around the opposite side. Okay, so let's uh, tape down our painting so it doesn't move around while we're painting. 
Okay, we'll make, we'll make this a two-part video. I notice my camera runs out at 30 minutes and then it shuts off. So we're right about at 20, 25 minutes now. I'll do a little bit of... Correcting here just to get my angles a little better with that roof and I think everything looks pretty pretty good. I think in the painting there was um, the roof was a little bit less. I added some more roof to it. Um, so that's that's okay. I think I just uh, added a little bit extra roofing area here. But uh, that looks pretty good. It seems to look uh, good for the painting. All right, so let's come back. Part two, we'll do the painting and have some fun. Be right back. See you on part two.